everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here, and I'm so glad you joined us today. I'm excited to talk to you about episode three of this series called The Key Components of Revival. Many people question what is revival, what does it look like? And in this series, I want to talk to you about the key components of revival. And today on episode three, I want to talk to you about unity and alignment. Because unity and alignment is everything. Without a true spirit of oneness and unity, there will be no growth. You see, even in the book of Acts, the word of God says that they met daily and they were of one accord. Did you know that God drove a Honda Accord? But you see, the believers were of one accord. They were of one mind, one vision, one perception, and they had their eyes on Jesus. There was no double-mindedness. There was no division, which means double vision. But they had their eyes on Jesus Christ. And when your eyes are fully on the Lord and the cross, the miracles, moves of God will take place. The reason why we see such a lack of revival or such a lack of power or a lack of God's movement on planet Earth is because people have different idols in their hearts. It's because people are truly not in love with the Lord with first love and they're truly not surrendered. But we need to die to ourselves daily and carry our cross. You see, without the lack of Without unity, there will be a lack of revival. And many times unity is what keeps revival and is what stirs revival to the next level. When there's division, when there's discord, when there's gossip, when there's slander, when there's all acts of flesh, when there's immorality taking place, then the flesh begins to get involved. And let me tell you, many revivals are killed because of division. Many revivals are killed because of jealousy. David's first Goliath was not a giant, but it was the giant of jealousy. And I believe there's so much jealousy, competition, comparison in the church that God wants to get rid of. However, we need to be in a place of humility. We need to learn to honor. When we truly learn to honor each other, the different gifts, graces, body, parts of the Lord, when we learn to honor and operate together, then we will truly function as the body of Jesus Christ. Wherever there's a lack of unity, there will be strife, there will be compromise, there will be flesh, there will be jealousy, and these things will kill revival. It may have started pure, but does it continue pure? That's the question. Many revivals start off pure, but they continue on because of money, greed creeps in, pride, arrogance creeps in, some of the flesh, maybe witchcraft begins to creep in. It starts off pure with the right spirit, but doesn't continue. That's why we need to guard. That's why we need to be unified. That's why there needs to be humility, and we need to continue to be in the spirit. The word of God here says in John 17, verse 20 to 23, this is the words of Jesus. I'm not asking on behalf of them alone, but also on behalf of them who will believe in me through their message. Verse 21, that all of them may be one. Say one, as you, Father, as in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one in them and you in me, that they may be perfect, perfectly united so that the world may know that you sent me and love them just as you have loved me. Now, I know that's a mouthful right there, but this is the high priest prayer of Jesus, John 17. This is his last prayer before Yeshua is going up to the Mount of Calvary and is crucified. Here's Jesus. He says, I pray that they would be one as you and I are one. Can you think about that? Imagine that. What does oneness with God the Father and Jesus the Son, the Messiah, what does that unity look like? That's the same type of oneness, koinonia, unity that you and I must have. But that is only done by the Spirit of God. The greater the unity, the greater the glory. And the Bible says that they may be one and that the glory would be on them and that the world will know that you sent me. So there's three things here in this prayer. Unity, 
equals glory. And glory equals salvation or revival. When there's unity of believers, like we see in the book of Acts, when there's unity of a group of people, then there is glory. There is an unusual sweet presence, a sweet fragrance. And from that power, that presence, then comes salvation. Then comes the demonstration of the gospel being preached. Then comes miracles. Then comes people coming onto the kingdom. But many people are so divided, they're so divisive, that they never see one person get saved. They never even learn to preach the gospel. We are commissioned and commanded to preach the gospel, not wag our fingers at our brothers and sisters, not put and push down other believers. Too many people are trying to be the Holy Ghost police. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were ordained to be the Holy Spirit police. I'm sorry, I didn't know you're called to be the spiritual sheriff. I did not know that God ordained or anointed you to put down brothers and sisters, to criticize, to demonize, to shun them away. Yes, there may be different doctrines of belief, but as long as the central doctrine of faith on Jesus is the same, then that's all that matters. Our differences should not get us to be divided. Remember, diversity is unity. Diversity is power. 12 tribes under one nation. Every tribe, nation, and tongue will come worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So diversity is unity. Conformity is false unity. Conformity is actually a form of communism and tyrannical dictatorship. That's religion. Religion says everybody looks the same, acts the same, speaks the same, is the same. When you are in church, you must be the same. No, that's religion. The kingdom celebrates diversity, celebrates uniqueness, personal personification of who you are in Christ Jesus. So diversity is unity and diversity is power. And we must be able to recognize the diverse gifts in one another. You're not called to be like Ben Lim. Ben Lim is not called to be like you. Yes, we honor the men of God, Reinhard Bonnke, Billy Graham, but you are called to be the original you. There is only one of you on planet Earth. And because there's such a lack of honor in the church, there's a lack of glory. There's a lack of power, lack of presence, a lack of miracles. Therefore, there's a lack of souls being won, unbelievers, heathens, people who have never heard the name of Jesus. Do you know the staggering number statistic of people in the United States that have never heard the gospel before? People in schools, high schools, elementary. Oh, Jesus. There's still a huge number of people that have never heard the gospel. Yes, your next door neighbor, people in your neighborhood. We need to preach the gospel. Come on, somebody. But that happens many times. Only when there's a glory, there's a move of God. Only when God begins to set your life on fire. Division kills revivals. And you see here, there's a famous story about the Azusa Street Revival. My goodness. The Azusa Street Revival ended because of jealousy. In 1909, after some disagreements, Florence Crawford, who was a secretary of the Apostolic Faith Mission, this person abruptly left town with the extensive roster of subscribers. Without this list of subscribers to the newspaper, to the news articles of the Azusa Street Revival, of the revival, without this, the mission's newspaper can no longer be circulated. As a direct result, vast crowds stopped coming to the services. With absolutely no media to broadcast the testimonies to provide information about the ongoing meetings, many were convinced that the revival had ended. Without new visitors, the subsequent, uh, the subsequent meetings began to lose much of the impact and urgency they once had. With fewer people to pray for, many of the other problems 
that had been lying on the surface began to emerge. There was a jealous person that was part of the Azusa Street Revival named Florence Crawford. This jealous person left the revival abruptly. He took the list of subscribers. At that time, they, the revival spread because of the newspapers. They had uh, addresses. They sent out these articles, these newspapers, these magazines all across, and that's how people began to come to the Azusa Street Revival from all abroad. But when this evil, angry, jealous person stole this email list, stole this list, the revival began to dwindle. People thought the revival ended. People stopped coming. And as the people stopped coming, the hunger began to lessen. The fear of God began to lessen. The move of God began to slow down. And all of a sudden, different problems began to manifest and emerge. And eventually, the Azusa Street Revival came to a stop. The jealousy of one person stopped a whole move of God. Yes, you can debate and say, well, maybe there are different reasons why God allowed it to happen. Sure. However, jealousy in the camp, sin in the camp of Achan will stop a divine move of God. We need to be pure. We need to be right. We need to be righteous. Let me tell you, many revivals stop because of the board. Many revivals stop because the man, woman, and God is an infidelity, immorality. There's perversion. There's greed. There's hidden things going on. Many moves of God stop because of the lack of unity and alignment. When you are aligned with the wrong people, revival stop. The move of God stops. But when you are aligned with the right spirited like-minded people, kindred spirits, <laughs> things take off. Revivals many times stops because of people. It begins with hungry, humble, prayerful people, but then it stops because of jealous, envious, religious, pharisaical people that begin to slowly divide the body and destroy the work of God. Look at Jesus. Jesus himself was crucified because of a religious spirit. I believe in these days, we are going to see a great battle of the religious spirit. It's the Antichrist spirit, a form of godliness with no power. But when the unity and the alignment comes into place, phew, revival takes off. Do you want to see a move of God? Do you want to see revival? Well, you need to have the right people in position to help structure and be that wineskin for that new wine to come. If you want to see a greater revival, then there needs to be greater administration. There needs to be greater unity of the right-minded people. That's why in the book of Acts, it says, they believed in the apostles' doctrines and they fellowshiped and gathered daily. And they saw many miracles and many were added to the church daily. But first, you need to believe in the right doctrines. Are you believing in the same thing? Are you desiring the same thing? Are you after the same thing? Let me tell you. When you believe in the Apostles' Doctrine's Creed, then that becomes your belief system to what you believe will come true. We're not just trying to fellowship and have a false unity, a fleshly unity of coffee and donuts. No, I'm tired of that. I don't want to be your friend if you don't want the more of God. I don't even need to talk to you. I don't even need to waste my time if you and I are not wanting, believing the same thing, which is the glory of God. Many people have a false form of unity. Jesus, it is carnal, it's lukewarm, it's disgusting. Coffee and donuts, let's just fellowship and kumbaya, my Lord. Oh yeah, community, community, community. 
I don't want community if Christ is not at the center. It's not Jesus plus coffee and donuts. It's not Jesus plus video games and and all. This. It's Jesus, period. Jesus, the fire, the power of God. I want you. Jesus is enough. And if our unity and our alignment is not on Jesus and the kingdom, then break it. Let me tell you, some of you are not going higher because of false alignments. Some of you are not going to the next level because of false alignments. Some of you are not seeing a great move of God because there's people around you, your leaders, that are secretly envious of you. They are secretly gossiping behind your back. They have a Jezebel spirit and they are conniving and evil plots to try to throw you out. Revival does not happen many times because of false alignments, false hearts, false spirits. Remember, even Moses' own wife and cousin, Miriam and Aaron, they were evilly jealous against Moses. You cannot be jealous against a man, woman, and God. Do not touch the Lord's anointed, says God. Don't ever speak against a man, woman, and God. Revival many times ends or does not happen because of division, because of jealousy, because of flesh, slander, gossip. Stop, shut your mouth, and use that mouth to pray. Let me tell you, people of God, if we really want a move of God, all you need is a remnant, two or three, a hungry few group of people that are all out, all in, sold out to see God move. Do you want to see God move? Do you want to see the glory of God? Get together with one or two few like-minded people and watch heaven come down. God doesn't need a, a lot. He just needs a few. God doesn't need a crowd. He just needs a few. God doesn't need the millions and a stadium filled gap. He just needs you. Will you move in a spirit of unity and move in a spirit of honor with the right people and build a tent, a wineskin for the new wine of the great billion soul harvest? I believe God is breaking some false alignments off of your life. God is exposing some secret haters. And I also believe that in this moment, God is about to bring you together with some divine appointments that are truly hungering, seeking after the right thing with the right heart. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lin. And in today's episode, we talked about unity and alignment. I pray that you would truly be united and aligned the right people so that you will see the greater glory and you will see the kingdom move and souls won to Jesus Christ. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. I hope this episode blessed you and encouraged you. Let me know in the comment section below what your main thoughts or highlights were if this ministered to you. And I pray that we will continue to see something fresh like the Azusa Street Revival never seen before in Jesus' name. God bless you. Until next time. Thanks for the like and the subscribe.